Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Health and Wellness Sport. And my name is Dr. Lewis. Today I'm talking about gallstones. And those of you who have suffered gallstones, uh, I hope you've recovered. But this is a video for you. Those of you who also intend to prevent formation of gallstones, again, this is a video for you. So welcome. Now, we will talk about what gallstones are, their types, how they are formed, and then what are the interventions that we can use, both medically and uh, dietary. Uh, that will help us clear these gallstones. So now, gallstones are very interesting. They start from bile. And if all of you know, bile or bile juice is a substance that comes from the liver. It's synthesized by the liver. Then it's stored in the gallbladder. So once you synthesize it in the liver, then it goes through these hepatic ducts into the gallbladder for storage. Now, when you consume a fatty meal, now remember that bile juice has two components. It has bile acids and bile salts. Now hold the thought on bile salts because these are very important in this process. Okay? Because uh, along the video we'll talk about them and how they are important in clearing bile, uh, the gallstones. Sorry. So these bile acids and bile salts in combination are the ones that form bile. So once you form bile, so the liver synthesizes it and then pumps it down into the hepatic ducts. These are the hepatic ducts into the uh, gallbladder through the cystic duct. Okay. So now, once you eat a fatty meal, these two, or basically bile in general, its work is just to emulsify this fat in your yeah, small intestines or duodenum. So, the function of these bile salts and these bile acids is just to sequester those fats in the intestines and make them a little soluble and break them down into small globules of fat that can be easily uh, chopped off by lipases that come from the pancreas. Okay, those uh, enzymes that break down fat. So once you do that, uh, now you've taken a fatty meal. And remember in this channel, we encourage you to eat high animal fat and that fatty meat or even fatty fish. So once you consume that fatty fish, this is the stomach. Fat cannot be digested in the mouth and in the stomach. So fat is digested basically in the small intestines. So what this food, after being digested, the protein and the carbohydrates have been absorbed or have been digested, then it is pushed into the small intestine. So this is the duodenum. And this is the pancreas. So the food comes into the duodenum. And then when it gets into the duodenum, it activates cells along this wall of the duodenum. And these cells produce an, a hormone that is called CCK. So CCK is basically cholecystokinin. Now this hormone is the one that causes contraction of the gallbladder. So it causes contraction of this gallbladder to release the bile juice. Okay, or the bile components into the small intestine. And you see this duct runs all the way and joins the pancreatic duct, then goes out, deposits its components into the duodenum through this sphincter that is called the sphincter of Odi. So we talked about the pancreas the other time and how fat metabolism happens. And I hope you've watched that video. If you've not, we'll put a link uh, down to this video so that you can understand the pancreas and its role in uh, blood sugar regulation. So you've taken a fatty, meat, a fatty meal, and then that fat is taken into the small intestine, specifically the duodenum. Then cholecystokinin hormone is produced. Once it's produced, it causes the gallbladder to contract, to release the components of bile into the small intestines. So it comes all the way through this duct. So this is the common duct, common hepatic duct. Then down here we have the bile duct. So this is the bile duct. So the common hepatic duct carries components of the uh, liver and also components of the gallbladder. So they go down into the bile duct and come out as bile juice. Then they join this, which is basically pancreatic juice from the pancreas, which then deposit into the small intestines. And that is supposed to help you break down fat. Okay. So if you have a problem with this gallbladder, or if you have a problem with the occlusion of these ducts, then you'll, be, you'll have a problem in uh, a breakdown of fat. Now, gallstones. Components of this bile juice are, as you said, bile acids and bile salts. And also, there's cholesterol. So at some point, this cholesterol crystallizes to form solids. And these solids are what we call gallstones. Now remember, this occurs normally. So we form these solids all the time, and they pass through the system easily, and they're excreted. Okay? So they form every time. They come through, they go into the sphincter of Odi, they come out, they go through the stool. However, occasionally, sometimes we form uh, uh, bigger stones. 
and these bigger stones start causing occlusion of these uh, ducts. And once they cause occlusion of these ducts, then we don't have bile juice and pancreatic juice coming into the small intestines to help you break down fat. And that is where the problem begins because the larger they grow, the occlusion happens. Then now you have a problem in uh, depositing bile juice. So that's what we call gallstones, okay? And then these gallstones, remember they are, they are components of cholesterol, but they do not come as a result of a higher or excess amount of cholesterol in your system. They come as a result of crystallization or crystallizing of these cholesterol particles, okay? So that is where these bile salts come in. So these bile salts, basically what they do is they prevent that cholesterol in bile to crystallize from crystallizing. So if you have limited amount of these bile salts in your system, then you're bound to have gallstones even with low cholesterol amounts okay so these are very important in this process because they control the level at which this cholesterol forms crystals and that is what uh, leads to gallstones now i want you to know there are three types of uh, gallstones but these are just general ones there are if you go deeper you realize there are many types of gallstones however the ones we've narrowed down are one cholesterol stones which basically means that cholesterol that is in your system or is in your bile crystallizes to form these stones that occlude this ducts then we also have pigment basically pigment means from the liver we have bilirubin and this bilirubin is the one that is draining into the small intestine so if you occlude this you block this then you will block which is the common duct or even the bile duct when you block it then you the bilirubin that is coming out to go into the stool will not pass here so once it's, it's inhibited from going into the small intestines and to go to give that a stool its color then what happens is it starts to build up. When you, once you build up that bilirubin, then you have that yellow skin and those yellow eyes which you refer to as jaundice, okay? So, and the itchy skin, that is jaundice, okay? So that is pigment stones, build up of bilirubin. Then another one is mixed stones, which basically means it is neither cholesterol nor pigment stones, or it can be both, okay? So you can get cholesterol and pigment stones both coming together to form larger stones, which we call the mixed stones. So those are the three types of uh, gallstones. You see, now when we, we, we start experiencing this occlusion, what happens? You see here we have three ducts. We have this common duct, then we have this cystic duct. So we have cystic, we have the common duct, we have the bile duct, then we have the pancreatic duct. So these occlusions will bring different conditions or different issues. What I'm saying is, if you block this cystic duct that, is, that, that, that brings components of the gallbladder, you will start experiencing a very severe pain in your right upper quadrant, okay? When you eat a fatty meal, you've eaten your fatty meat, you start feeling so much pain in your right upper quadrant. Why are you feeling that pain? It's because you're producing CCK, and CCK is causing a contraction of the, of the gallbladder. And since this gallbladder has, this duct has been occluded, there's no components of this, gall, uh, this gallbladder going into the common duct to help you release it into the pancreatic duct. So the problem comes here. When you have this occlusion, you'll feel that pain. Okay, and this is what, this is the symptom that most of you receive. And this can also be confused with the liver problem because liver problems also give you that uh, effect or that pain. So this is a problem. So you'll always feel it when you have eaten a fatty meal. Okay, so you eat your meat that has a lot of fat. Then an hour down the line, you're feeling this pain. You just know that you have an occlusion of the, of the cystic duct and therefore components of the gallbladder are not coming out. So bile is not flowing uh, as it's supposed to flow, okay? Then when you block this duct, then chances of you starting to, to distend this, this uh, gallbladder are high. So it starts to bulge, it starts to grow bigger. And also it starts to get inflammation and infection. So once you get that inflammation and that infection, it's either you treat it with antibiotics or you can, there's a procedure for cutting off the gallbladder, which I don't, basically I uh, recommend because I don't think we should chop off biological functions uh, in the system. So there's a procedure that the, a surgical procedure for removing the gallbladder. Okay, if you are told it has uh, this the, the super infection and it's, it's extended. So you can chop off the gallbladder. Oh, so that is blocking the cystic duct. How about the other ducts? When you block the bile duct, so either the common hepatic duct or the bile duct, once you block it, remember components of the liver are not going in, so bile will start uh, building up. Also, we are not bringing in the bile juice, so you will pass stool that has a lot of fat because this is fat that is in stool, and then you're not breaking it down to absorb it. So you'll pass fat 
a stool that has a lot of fat which is called steatorrhea. Okay, so that will mean in your toilet when you try to flush that stool, it's going round, it's not going down. It has a, a layer of fat and it's hard to flush. So that's a symptom that will make you know you already have an occlusion of the bile duct. Okay, and again another symptom will come in as a result of buildup of bilirubin. So you'll have jaundice, itchy skin, all those allergies, yellow eyes and the yellow skin. Then you realize you have this problem. This one, there's also another surgical or another intervention, uh, medical intervention that they can push this stone through and then that duct opens up and you start functioning normally. However, we want you to prevent getting into these stones rather than doing going for those expensive pro procedures to just uh, get off those stones. Now, the last one is here. Remember, this is the pancreatic duct. So the pancreatic duct brings in the pancreatic juices and also uh, the gallbladder and the liver uh, contents. So it, draw, it draws them into the, it drains them into the small intestine. Now, if you block it, if you block the pancreatic duct, then that means all components from the liver and from the pancreas are not going into your small intestines. But worst of it is, these pancreatic juices that are coming in have lipases, proteases, and also amylases. Those are enzymes that just break down fat, uh, protein, and uh, carbohydrates. Now, you've blocked this flow. So there's no flow of pancreatic juice into the small intestines. Now, this is a problem because this will start causing something called autodigestion. So meaning the pancreas will start digesting itself because these uh, uh, enzymes, uh, basically the proteases, the ones that break down proteins, proteases, will start breaking down the pancreas because remember this pancreas is made of protein. So they'll start uh, uh, destroying the pancreas and that's what we call acute gallbladder pancreatitis. So you'll start having that pancreatitis and also pancreatitis can be caused by alcohol intake. Okay, so if you have alcohol intake, first of all, you'll kill the liver. Then you might cause these occlusions because of a uh, high buildup of uh, uh, cholesterol. And then you will also kill the pancreas, which is a huge problem. Okay, so you'll start causing acute, acute pancreatitis just because of the blockage of the pancreatic duct. So those three. One, you block this duct, you get inflammation and pain in the gallbladder and distension. Two, you block this bile duct, then you get jaundice. And you also get steatorrhea. And then three, you block this pancreatic duct, and what you get is autodigestion of the pancreas, which is basically uh, pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis. So that is an uh, uh, explanation of gallstones. Now, if at all you've already uh, had a chance to uh, expose yourself or get to this gallstones, what do you do? Remember, we already said that bile salts are very important in helping you prevent cholesterol crystallization. And that is the cause of, bile, uh, of gallstones. So if you augment uh, these bile salts, then chances of getting gallstones are very minimal. And how do you augment these bile salts? First of all, fasting is very important in this process. Okay, so fasting will help you concentrate bile, stones, bile salts sorry, and also help you heal from the liver and also clear all these inflammatory conditions. Number two, omega-3. And where do we find omega-3? Now basically eat fatty meat. Fatty meat, fatty fish, all those seafoods. They have high content of omega-3, even the liver, these uh, organ meats. We have the eggs. Those are things that have high content of omega-3. And this omega-3 is the one that is uh, helpful in clearance of gallstones. So concentrate on those foods, the fatty meat, liver, fish, and the eggs. And then vitamin D. So vitamin D is a very important component. This is just free. It comes from the sun. So the sun activates vitamin D in your skin. And then this vitamin D is activated in the liver and the kidneys then vitamin D is very important in dissolving gallstones, okay? And then lower these two. So basically insulin and estrogen. For women, if you are on long-term contraceptives, then it's time for you to just start drawing them off, get them out of your system totally. Those hormonal contraceptives are very dangerous because they have estrogen, and this will add up to your problems in future, starting from cancer, heading to gallstones, heading to those uh, hormonal imbalances because of estrogen dominance. Also, if you're a man and you're fat, that means your levels of estrogen are starting to go higher. If you grow those man boobs uh, and, and, and that fat body, you have high content of estrogen. So you start how you need to lower this estrogen. Also, estrogen is part of the GMO. The GMO uh, mimic estrogen receptors, and therefore, it's very important for you to drop those GMO products and the wheat products, because they're the ones that will expose you to high content of estrogen. So lower estrogen, as low as possible, you'll get uh, to clear this. Then the last one is insulin. Basically, how do you lower insulin? You need 
to drop those simple carbohydrates. Basically, carbohydrate intake is the one that brings you a higher chance of getting uh, uh, those spikes of insulin in the system. So if you lower insulin, then definitely you lower all these chances of getting these conditions. And if you have them already, they start to disappear. So this is Gallstones.